Guys, stop for a minute. Take a look at your wallet. Now, your wallet says a lot about you. I just want to ask, is it time for an upgrade? Our friends at Ridge are here to help you step up your wallet game. Their incredible wallet is light, sleek, and industrial. It doesn't fold or awkwardly bulge out of your back pocket. It slips into your front pocket. Ridge wallets hold up to 12 cards, plus all the cash that you need. You can choose from over 30 colors and styles. That includes carbon fiber and burnt titanium. It's the best wallet you can buy. You don't just have to take my word for it because there's over 40,000 five-star reviews. I was skeptical at first, but once I tried it, I never went back to my old wallet and I'm confident that you're gonna love it too. But guess what? No pressure. Test it out for 45 days. If you don't love it, send it back. You get a full refund. If you decide to keep it, and I really think you will, it comes with a lifetime warranty. Go to ridge.com slash chael or just click on the link below. That's gonna get you 10% off plus free worldwide shipping and returns. Main event, a lot of moving parts here. A lot, a lot of moving parts, right? What's the golden life in rule? Put yourself in somebody else's shoes. Put yourself in their shoes, how would you want to be treated? Put yourself in their shoes, how would you react? It is awesome, and it is something that we should all, and I think we do, I think we do appreciate that Adesanya, who only has one job, right? There's a bargain here. We have, we've made a deal. Even if we made it with Dana directly, we still made a deal. I'm going to give you X amount of my time, and I'm going to give you X amount of my dollars. Not a penny more. And you're going to give me three to five rounds under the unified rules. That's the deal, and we agreed to it. We think that's a pretty good value. We think we get a lot of time, we get a lot of action, we get a lot of fun for that fee. When you have someone like Adesanya who decides it's not enough, you have three ways that you can entertain. And first and foremost, you are an entertainer. You are on television. You gotta walk out. That ain't gonna be any fun. How would it be? You know the kind of focus that a guy needs to have? In his walkout, that's not going to be any fun, but it could. You've got the fight. That Hell, that's anybody's guess. And you have your post-fight speech. Adesanya is the only athlete in the sport who gives you all three. It's only Adesanya. He will entertain you on the way to ring. Why did that work tonight? He gimmick infringed on the taker. I mean, you're up against it right there. You want to come out with a shtick. That's a risk. I will watch it every time. I'm likely to tell you what a bad job you did, but I'll watch. When you gimmick and fringe and you take a shtick from somebody else, it's hard, right? There's a reason the cover band is playing to 80 people, even though they're singing George Strait. When George did the exact same thing, he played in New York to 80,000 people, right? There's a reason. It was unoriginal. Why'd that work? You might think that's a simple question. It's not. That was awesome. And it was an unexpected treat. And if Adesanya had ever broke character, which is simple as, hurry up. Had he ever got out of the rhythm of those steps, if he ever even just for a moment looked up and then tried to put the hat back down, it wouldn't have worked, but it did. And he had a yearn. And he had Jared engraved on it. It was great. It really was. It really was great, particularly when you think of the appreciation that was over and above. He did not have to do that. Our bargain was already made. And when you understand, how would you like to do that? How would you like to be about to fight for your life? And I don't mean the literal, you good chance of flat lines. It's for your life. It's for your livelihood. For your bread and meat. How would you like to be in that pressure cooker of a situation and not have complete focus because you took it out to entertain not yourself? You wanted to do it for the fans. You wanted to throw them something extra, right? That's a cool thing. So you get the fight itself. And a lot of people criticize. I mean, you just do. 
somewhere we started this narrative of this business about finishing fights like that that's that exists that's a real phenomenon and then you look for the action and you look for the activity i i get those things but when a guy comes out the other side because he's in a two man sport and the opponent didn't and then fill in the blanks i would never put down jared that was awesome jared really did do a very good job tonight stood and traded stood out there and kickboxed with the sports arguably current greatest kickboxer. Jared did a great job and he was in shape. He was fit. He took it serious. Jared served himself well. He was not equipped with the tools necessary to handle Israel Adesanya. But when you're in one of those situations and you are scared to death, there's a criticism that will go to the winner. I don't know to the extent, and I won't know, until about Monday Monday morning right around 2 o'clock. Right around the time Errol Hawani's getting done with the MMA hour. That's kind of when the final analysis of fans and pundits alike will come in on how much they want to blame Israel Adesanya for not having absolute fireworks. I don't believe it will be near as bad as the way they blamed Adesanya when he beat Whitaker the second time. You try beating Whitaker. One time. You tried beating Whitaker for one minute. He beat him for 25 and we criticized him. Okay. The same thing happened to Anderson Silva when guys were too scared to engage. Well, why aren't you just knocking him out? I can't knock. Why don't I just knock you out? Because I can't reach you, you dumb son of a bitch. Step in here and I will knock you out. But we like to put it on them. And I'm only bringing that to you This sport does not run on great fights. It's presented to you guys, and you'll swear up and down that I'm wrong. It does not run on excitement. This sport runs on one thing, one, and I'm talking the business, one thing, anticipation. Knowing what you know now, knowing that the last pay-per-view, who was the main event there, Glover versus Prohaska, knowing that that was arguably the greatest for entertainment, or close and interesting matches, the greatest pay-per-view of all time. Knowing that, and knowing what you know about tonight, we had all these featured fights that we were looking forward to. Knowing that, take up three hours of your time, it's going to cost you $50. Knowing everything that you know now, if I told you you could only watch one card, which would have it been? Because it would not have been the most exciting pay-per-view of all time that was last month. It would have been tonight. Because of anticipation. I can bring you a night of fights that weren't overly exciting and I could do great business if you anticipated them. I can't do it in reverse. I only bring that to you because I'm not really sure where the criticism of Adesanya comes from other than from the fact that we're absolutely spoiled. What do you want Adesanya to do? And moreover, if you are going to understand that the opponent is not stepping in and engaging, the opponent is not trying to fight because he's scared to death, the same as the boys were against Anderson. What do you want to do there? You want, you want to put down Jared? He's stepping in there. He's dealing with a freak speed and freak skills, and he's not equipped with the takedown. I mean, what, what do you want to do? Adesanya on the way out the door hits the trifecta by letting know who he's going to fight next. And he did this. He stuck this right up Joe Rogan's ass. And I, I really appreciated it. Joe got in with the usual shtick about, well, you know, there's certainly some, uh, some things in the division that uh, are kind of coming together for Israel. Cut him off. Said, who are you kidding? It's Alex Piera. You've been telling everybody for the last month it's the winner of Strickland and Piera. Well, by the way, that's Piera. I'm fighting Piera. I loved the way Adesanya did that. Stop the crap. Stop the BS. It's me. Israel Adesanya has not had a fight since he won the championship in Australia against Whitaker the first time, where he has not announced his next opponent before he leaves. And he announced it tonight, too, and it's the right fight, and I look forward to it. And Piera is certainly a dangerous and viable challenge, but the mere fact that Izzy would not blink, he would not duck. He didn't blink, and he didn't duck tonight. With Jared Cannon here, the mere idea that anybody, I'm preaching to you, I know you guys aren't going to do, my audience is not a bunch of dumb thumbs, but we are going to have people in the sport that begrudge Adesanya's performance tonight. That's not fair. That's not fair at all. 